Chuck Fresh from Fresh and Felicia. Today we're going to talk about the Espen Nesta. Super excited to talk about this. We're actually starting to exchange our bikes from the standard e-bikes to foldable bikes. We can throw them in the back of an RV and tour the country. You'll see it comes in a pretty big box. They say that uh, installation or assembly is going to take about 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah, a little unrealistic. If you have any kind of mechanical skills, you're probably looking at closer to 45 minutes to an hour. Or if you're stopping to watch videos like this, it could be a couple hours. But don't rush it. Make sure it's done right. Um, real neat thing you could do with the box is somebody else showed me this. You could use the box as a platform if you want to build it inside your house without getting any oil or grease or any dirt on your carpet. So that's pretty cool. So you have this giant platform now. It's really cool. So cut the straps. Be really careful. You don't want to puncture the tires and you don't want to scratch the paint. So just be real gingerly. Everything's wrapped very, very well. I don't think you're going to have any problems there. There's the uh, fender for the uh, front you'll need to install. Here's the seat and the seat post. Everything wrapped very, very well in a bunch of styrofoam. And make sure you hang on to the packing materials just in case something's missing or something's wrong with it. It happens. I mean, it, these are complicated items. So here is your box you're going to need to get to this. It's going to give you your tools, your headlight, your uh, charger, and your pedals and uh, everything you need in your instruction manual everything you need to get started it's a nice collection of tools and as we mentioned a little bit later hang on to these if you have a bike bag throw them in there this is pretty much every tool you're going to need to do any kind of repair on this bike all right carefully tay i speed it up a little bit it's kind of boring to watch so all right stop here the first thing you want to do is charge your battery as soon as you get it out of the box so find the charger find the battery it's underneath in that area somewhere this is what it looks like and plug that baby in there and start charging. A full charge is gonna take somewhere between five and six hours, a little bit of a charge when it comes from the factory. But if you wanna ride this thing when you're done building it, start the charge as soon as you can. All right, the first thing you're gonna to do to put the bike together is uh, install the front wheel and it's gonna to begin to look like a bike. So it comes with this little spacer in here, this little placeholder. Just take this, actually a pretty nice bolt, a couple nuts on it. So you're gonna make sure that the, uh, the disc brake is gonna line up where the disc brake pads are. So you'll see that that's going to be on the left if you're looking at it forwards. You wanna loosen these nuts a lot because it's gonna be kind of awkward, especially if you're doing this by yourself. You're gonna want that front fork to fall. There's a little spacer in, in the brakes too. Make sure you pop that out. You're gonna want those, those, those front forks to fall right onto the axle of the wheel. And it's a lot easier if you have a lot more play with the nuts. So don't be afraid to loosen them up. You can even take them off too. They always put them back on. So very, very important. You can't see it behind this fork here, but there's the disc brake pads. So make sure that slides in. You don't want to bend it. So you kind of have to do that gingerly. And then you'll just let gravity take over. And it will, if you loosened it up, I had to loosen it a little bit more. Loosen those nuts up a little bit. Gravity will take over and it will just fall nicely into those slots. And then you can go ahead and tighten it up a little bit. You have to do it a couple of times. Just make sure those discs are lined up properly and I'll let gravity take it over. It took me a couple of tries here to get it in there. It typically does. And then once it falls in there, you can kind of just tighten the nuts up a little bit. You see we're loosening. I didn't loosen it enough. There it goes. It just drops right in there real nicely. You don't have to adjust the brakes. You don't have to adjust the disc. It's really nice. It's ready to go. It's amazing. These bikes are pretty much 95% built in the box, which is mind-blowing, that uh, logistics. All right, step four. Let's put the handlebars in. You have to put it while they're down in the down unlocked position. It won't fit if you try to get in there. Don't try it. I did. You're going to find a little slot. There's a little groove in there. Just loosen up that quick lock and uh, the quick release. And just slide that baby in there and lock it into place. Then you can fold it up and then lock those handlebars into place. It's really nice that this folds over. It's going to save you a ton of space in an RV or some small areas. Just lock that baby in place. It's not going anywhere. There's a little switch there. Don't worry, it's not going to fall apart. Next step, we're going to look at the pedals now. It comes with a little instruction manual here. It tells you which one is left and which is right. You can look at the end of the bolt. You'll see it's stamped with L or right. And remember, that's left looking towards the front of the bike and right looking at the front of the bike. So um, you're going to see they have different threads. So you're going to have to figure out which way they go. Put the washer on first. And you'll see that this twists this way. So you can finger tighten it. There's a little bit of grease on there. They pre-greased it, which is nice. You don't have to do that yourself. And tighten these guys up pretty well. Because uh, 
when they say pretty well, there's actually torque wrenches that tell you exactly how much, but just enough where you can't tighten it any more comfortably. And that should be enough. But those are pretty important that those are on there tight. All right, you're going to do that to the right pedal as well. Here's the headlight and the front fender. Now, this is kind of a little awkward. and This took a lot more time than I expected because there's a little lock nut on the back of this bolt. And it's in a really strange, awkward position. It's hard to get out with the Allen wrench. And uh, it really takes a little bit to get out. So this took me probably a good 10 minutes to do that. And you see the time starts adding up. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to slide the front fender through there. And you'll see there's a little metal tab. And that bolt will go through there. But don't put the bolt in yet because you have to put the headlight in there. Unless you're going to put the headlight on the front rack, which you can. But I don't want it on my front rack because I want to use my front rack to carry things. So I'm going to put my front headlight right here in this little fender assembly. So you'll see that bolt goes through that uh, uh, the, the assembly on the light there. And then it pushes through the hole in the bike's front fork. And then it connects to the front fender nicely. And again, you have to find the right nut for that guy. And it's going to take you a little while to do this if you have big, chunky fingers like I do. And uh, but again, be patient. You'll get it done. Tighten that bad boy up because that's not going anywhere. And uh, you never want to ever tighten or mess with that again. So you can safely tighten that up to where it's going to be. And then there's the smallest nut is located on the bottom. Again, these are kind of, they're lock nuts. So they're going to be a little tough. You can't really pull them off with your fingers. You're going to need a tool to kind of twist those off and then put them back on. And again, tighten these guys up pretty well too. And that's going to keep your fender securely in place. So you don't splash up any mud or snow or water. If you happen to ride in those things, whether you do it on purpose, I understand you can. I think these bikes are rainproof from what I've read. So yeah, just tighten those guys up. You got a left and a right. Same thing on the other side, two lock washers. You can get it on their finger tight just so they're in there and then use the wrench that came with it. Or you could use your own wrench too. I'm not sure what size this is. And then step six, I go ahead and I tighten everything. I'm going to tighten those pedals one more time. I'm going to tighten my front wheels. I'm going to check my back wheels. Make sure everything's nice and tight. So we're getting closer to the time where we're going to get to that test ride. We want to make sure everything's on there securely and not going anywhere. All right, the seat post comes with it. You can change this seat if you want to. It's a pretty standard size. It is a quick release nut, so just loosen that up a little bit. It's pretty tight when it comes from the factory. Just twist it in there. I usually go all the way down to the bottom, see where I'm going to want it, lock it in there, and you can change that later. Change the height of that if you want to. This bike does not have rear suspension, so a lot of people opt to put uh, seat posts that have suspension in them too. It does have front suspension. All right, next step, we're going to put the front rack on if your bike comes with a front rack. Now, you'll see there's four bolts in here that have these long cylindrical spacers. So you're going to take all four of those out and then uh, put them in like this. And it's a little tricky to do this. It's better if you have two people to do that. And what I did is I ran the wires behind the rack. So it kind of kept it out of place, makes it look a little bit neater. And I believe that's what those spacers are for. And then tighten that guy up. You can't put a whole lot of weight on the front. You can't really sit a kid or a dog or anything, but you can carry a school bag or some tools or some pizzas or something on the front rack. The back rack is rated for a little bit more weight. All right, now you're going to need to connect that headlight. If you put it on the rack, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you have enough slack. It's a real simple connection, two little pins. And it's a little slot, so you can't put it in wrong. And make sure there's just enough slack before you tie that cable off on the front. And there you go. You've got a almost fully functional bike. Not too bad, right? All right, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to inflate the tires because they're probably disinflated, uninflated, or flat, as we call it in the business here. I recommend about 20 PSI. I have this Lockathor cordless air compressor. It's also a battery charger and a USB a power bank and a flashlight is pretty cool i'll put the, the uh, link for that below you can buy that on amazon now you'll notice the first gear very it's eight gears so the first gear is very very close to the wheel it's not touching it but there's a tiny little tolerance there and i can see how that can make you nervous all right so once your battery's done charging uh, mine took about four hours you're going to attach the battery and it slides in with these slots here you can actually leave the battery on there permanently and charge it on your bike now i tried to test the battery but nothing's happening. Why? Because the switch on the side. Don't forget there's a switch. You have to turn that on if you want to use the battery or any of its functions. 
here's the basic controls. You have eight gears and the big switch is going to shift down and the little switch is gonna shift up. And here is your electronic control module here. And this is your throttle. Now you don't wanna hit the throttle when that thing's on in your house or you're gonna put some holes in the drywall. Believe me, it's a powerful 750 watt motor and uh, it's, it's, it's gonna move if you hit that throttle when it's on. You've got pedal assist from one to five. That's the amount of power the motor is going to help you with when you're pedaling. You can also set it to zero too, so it does not. And you can just ride like a regular bike. You can cycle through the modes by clicking M. It'll show you your speed, your average speed, and your maximum speed. You can also do some other stuff. There's some buttons in the book you can play with. And we'll do another video with the advanced settings. So here she is. She's ready for her test ride. Let's take her out on the road and see what happens. Now, they do recommend that you ride this as a bicycle first so you can kind of gauge the weight if you're just coming from a regular analog bicycle the balance is going to be a lot different because these things are heavy it's about 60 65 pounds and that's a lot i mean typical bicycles are in the neighborhood of 30. so i just opened her up man i pedaled a little bit the pedal assist does kick in there is some significant torque so be ready for that when you start pedaling you're in pedal assist one it's going to jump on you a little bit so just be ready if you know it you're going to get used to it in a matter of seconds but a little bit more torque than my other e-bikes and uh the throttle just opens up this is my first thumb throttle i used to have a half twist on the right side the thumb throttle is on the left side here underneath the brakes and i just opened that bad boy up got it all almost up to 21 miles an hour we can ride on these sidewalks in florida so that is pretty cool we share with golf carts and pedestrians and runners and skateboards and everything else but it's a pretty smooth ride. Those nice big four inch tires are gonna let you ride over grass. You can be able to go through dirt. You probably do some level of mountain biking as well. So it gives you that flexibility and they're great on the road too. I think they give you a little bit more grip on the road as well. A little more expensive, but it's included with this bike, which is very, very nice. I prefer them over the thin tires. You got a lot more traction, a lot more, a lot more rubber grabbing the road and it's gonna take turns a little bit better. It's also going to give you a little bit more uh, insulation against bumps and shocks. So I went and opened it up. I started pedaling it, pedaling it, pedaling it, changed the pedal assist. It went all the way up to five and hit about 20-ish, 21 miles an hour. And that's a pretty good clip for a bicycle. And uh, yeah, look at that. It is very, very comfortable to pedal. Uh, the bike itself feels very, very well balanced. They are hydraulic brakes, which is a nice upgrade. I didn't expect that. And it's a newer LCD. It's actually colored as opposed to the old models, which were all black and white. It gives you a lot of information there. You can set it to kilometers instead of uh, miles per hour, whatever you want to do there. I think it comes from the factory when you buy it in America, and miles per hour. Took it out on the road, opened her up a little bit, and it is a lot of fun to ride. I'm going to take a couple of more rides on, uh, actually we're going to take it to the beach and I'm going to take it on a local dirt trail. We have like kind of a, like a soft dirt trail here. We'll take that through there. We have a lot of construction too. Now. It is a very, very nice ride. I do dig that it's 20 inches. You can step through it too, which is great for older people who don't have that, there's not that limber anymore. It's about 15 inches you need to step over. So that's going to be great for guys, for older guys, for girls people who just don't want to throw their leg up over their bike. Very, very nice design. I'm digging the double racks. I'm loving the hydraulic brakes and the thing just cooks. The torque on this thing is insane. You really feel like you've got a powerful 750 watt motor underneath you. Now, I like this bike. I dig that I can fold it. I like that I can store it in an RV. I love that it's 750 watts with a thousand watts peak. It's got plenty of space to store stuff. I'm going to buy a new bag for it. I'm going to put some phone holders on the uh, handlebars. Uh, eight gears. I'll probably never use most of these. I usually stay in the middle three, somewhere around there too. I don't really shift too much. We don't have a lot of hills in Florida. If you have hills, you'll use more gears. Um, very, very cool hydraulic brakes. They work great. They stop on a dime. 
And uh, here's the, uh, I'm gonna do a separate video too on folding this guy up and how to store it as well. So you can fold the frame itself and then the handlebars come down. The whole thing kind of comes together like a pair of scissors. It's very, very nice, super convenient. You throw these in the back of an SUV, otherwise you have to let the front wheel hang out of the Jeep. They're just a little too long, a little longer than traditional bikes. Real easy to lock in. It's not going to come off. Again, you can set the seat height. You can even replace this post if you want to. A lot of people end up replacing the seats, but this seat actually was pretty comfortable. It had a good amount of cushion in it. I am very pleased with this Espinesta, and I think you will be too. I think it's a great starter e-bike, and it's a great all-around. Oh, here's the hidden USB. So this is really cool. You can actually charge your phone right through the controller underneath here this little hidden bad boy so uh yeah very nice starter bike and about the same size as our other uh smaller step through i think you're gonna be pleased it's a great all-around e-bike and a great starter e-bike as well